Tomatoes, tomatoes everywhere! from Living Traditions Homestead and today is a double whammy for you guys. I am going to be making tomato sauce and tomato juice all at one time. Um, but I wanted to just kind of share a little bit with you guys before we get started. Um, we are so blessed by our tomato crop this year. Um, you know, we uh, have shown our tomato uh, rows. We have two rows of tomatoes, one row of hybrids, and one row of heirlooms. Uh, you can check out a video of us uh, picking tomatoes um, in uh, this video up here, which Kevin will put on whatever side it goes on. Um, and, um, you know, we just cannot believe that uh, the first summer garden on our homestead, we've been in our homestead about a year, uh, we weren't able to have a home or a uh, garden last year because we moved into this property uh, at the beginning of July. Uh, so this is our first garden um, in our first whole summer here, and the tomatoes and the produce in general are just coming out amazingly. We can't even get over it. Um, these tomatoes that I have here and the tomatoes you've seen in the two videos before, me canning diced tomatoes and us picking tomatoes, uh, those are all the hybrids. Our heirloom tomatoes haven't even started ripening yet. They're still growing. They're still small and getting bigger and bigger. Uh, so gosh, we are just so thankful and so blessed that um, we've had such success in this first garden. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't our first gardening experience ever. Uh, we had a smaller homestead in the Phoenix, Arizona area for about four years or five. Uh, where we grew a bunch of tomatoes in the desert, yes, in the desert, and then prior to that two or three years in our residential property in like an HOA neighborhood, uh, we grew tomatoes and some other garden vegetables uh, for like two or three years also in the desert before we moved here. So we're not total novices, uh, but to the Missouri Ozarks, we are just thrilled to have such success in our first summer. So. Um, that is what I want to share with you about that. We're so blessed and grateful and thankful. Um, my pantry of, um, of tomatoes is completely empty. Um, I canned as much as I could two summers ago um, in preparation for our move, um, and those were out maybe be, maybe six months ago or so. So um, we're not selling any of these at the farmer's market this year because our main priority is to stock our own shelves first for our family. Um, if we have leftover, we'll take them to the um, farmer's market when I don't want to see another tomato again for an entire year. Um, so like I said before, today we are going to be canning uh, tomato sauce and tomato juice all at once. And I want to teach you this trick. Um, I am not an expert at canning. Um, I don't have all of the answers, um, but this is a trick that is really helpful for me. Um, my main goals this summer for canning tomatoes are diced tomatoes tomato sauce and tomato juice um, and salsa and um, you know in previous years I have canned pasta sauce versus tomato sauce and I found myself having to buy just plain tomato sauce to go into recipes that don't require like the oregano and the basil and the other things that are in my pasta sauce so this year I decided to just do um, mostly tomato sauce um, now, I'm contemplating doing uh, at least one batch of pasta sauce so that I can share that with you guys. Um, if you think that's a good idea, let me know in the comments below um, and I'll, I'll get out my pasta sauce recipe and make just a little bit so you guys um, can follow along. Um, but anyway, um, today, like I said, two in one, uh, double whammy, buy one, get one, whatever you want to call it, that's what today is. Um, I developed this way of doing it because um, I really don't like having a pot of tomato sauce on the stove for hours and hours and hours to cook down and um, to thicken it. I, um, gosh, you know, I have so many things to do and um, I would rather 
find a different way to thicken it. Now, when I was working full time in, in the Phoenix area on our homestead, the way I got around uh, cooking that down is I would dice all of our tomatoes that came into harvest. I would freeze them all so that um, so that I could do all of this at once. I didn't have time to can every day or every other day like I'm doing right now because I was working full time. So I would freeze them all and then when I thawed them out, uh, they would separate into like the super watery stuff and then just the good pulp stuff. So I was able to just dump my freezer bags full of uh, thawed tomatoes through a colander or a strainer and that would separate all the good tomato stuff and uh, the watery stuff and then I could you know dump that or whatever because there really wasn't much good stuff in there anymore. Um, but uh, this time around I'm going to teach you a second way to do this. Um, I have washed all of the tomatoes that are ready for me to can today. Um, I have at least this much ripening on our shelves uh, to do another day. Um, I have just, I quickly washed every single one of them um, because I'm just going to be chopping them and putting them into the pot uh, to get um, heating up. I'm not going to skin them first. So I washed them just because some of them had like leaf bits on them and, and you know maybe some bird droppings or something and I really don't want that in my sauce mix. Um, so I'm going to get started on that. Oh. One more thing, I wanted to show you how gorgeous these tomatoes are. Look at the size of that. I hope that you can see um, how big that is and how gorgeous this is. Um, our hybrids that we're raising this year, are there are two hybrids, um, Early Girls, which we have raised a lot in Arizona, and a new one called Jetstar. Well, new to us, it's not really new. New to us called Jetstar. And the reason why I chose that variety to, to try this year is because the University of Missouri lists this as one of the most disease resistant uh, strains of hybrid tomatoes out there. And oh my gosh, like all of these tomatoes are humongous. Most of the tomatoes on here are from the Jet Stars and they're consistently gorgeous and huge. And you let, you know what, I'm going to cut this open and, and let you see how gorgeous this is in the middle stress enough to you how gorgeous these tomatoes are. I'm just going to cut it in half and show you. Look at how gorgeous that is. Isn't that amazing? Oh! I can't even get over it. I cannot even believe how beautiful the insides of these tomatoes are. And they're all like that. Look at these. Oh my goodness. <sighs> can't even get over it. Okay, enough jabbering on and on. I'm having a hard time with our cabinet here. Enough jabbering on and on. I'm going to get started. I'm going to be cutting out the cores of these and then, you know, just kind of chopping them in quarters or whatever and putting them in my pot so that I can get them on the oven. So I'm going to get working, uh, get these on the stove. I'm going to get working and then I'll check back with you when these are all in the pot. Well, I'm about halfway done with the amount of tomatoes that I have to cut up. And as you can see, my pot is like almost completely full. So what I'm going to do is put this on the stove top and get it uh, heating up and boiling down because it will start to like break down in there and it will give me more room to put more and more tomatoes on top. So I'm going to put it on uh, like a medium low heat and uh, get it going. I'm going to make sure that I come back here and stir this often. It is possible for it to start burning on the bottom and you don't want that burnt stuff mixed in with your uh, pasta sauce. Uh, your tomato sauce, sorry. Um, so I'm just going to turn this on. I'm going to keep this on like two and a half. I'm going to keep chopping tomatoes and adding them to them and stirring and stirring. And then once the juices start separating from the rest of the pulp and the skins and stuff, then I'll bring you back and show you what I'm going to start doing next. Okay, so I have been continuing to chop the uh, tomatoes and putting them in my can as I'm warming it up. And I'll tell you, it's only been less than 10 minutes. Uh, since I started heating these tomatoes up and I want to show you how much liquid is starting to come out of these tomatoes. 
So it is very, very liquidy. And this is what I don't want to have to boil off of my tomato sauce. I want to capture all of this liquid as tomato juice and can it separately from my sauce. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ladle and I'm going to start ladling off some of this liquid and pouring it through a fine strainer into another bucket. If some of the tomato pieces get in there, that's fine. They're going to collect in my strainer and then I'm just going to put all of this stuff back in uh, with my, my sauce mixture, my tomato mixture. And I'm just going to keep taking off all of this liquid until I feel like most of it is gone uh, before I start running it through uh, my little machine, which will take the skins out and the seeds out and uh, leave me with the pulp. So I'm going to uh, continue doing this as well as chopping up the rest of my tomatoes, putting it in here and just have this process go back and forth and back and forth until I'm ready to start running my cooked tomatoes through my little strainer machine. Well, it's been about an hour since I first started putting this on the stove. Um, all of the tomatoes have been cut up and have been put into the pot and as it has cooked down, as I see that it becomes really like liquidy, I'm just ladling it off and putting it through my strainer into a second pot where I'm capturing all of the tomato juice. So I'm done now. I'm, I have whatever juice I'm going to be getting is in this pot and whatever um, puree um, or uh, tomato sauce I'm going to get I have in this pot. And you can see that uh, this is quite a bit thicker. You can see that it's mostly cooked down. Um, and then over here in this pot, look at how much tomato juice I got off of there. Um, you know, it's really runny and, and that is fine. I'm gonna can this for, for drinking and for using in soups and in my chili and those kinds of things. But had I not taken off all of this water and all of this juice, I would have had this boiling and simmering for hours and hours. Some people simmer their tomato sauces for 12 hours, 24 hours, and not only do I not have the time for that, but I don't want to waste the energy, I don't want to waste the cost of the propane to do that. And then in the end, I get two products for, you know, one time frame here. So I want to show you the next step that I uh, do when it comes to creating the tomato sauce, and it's over here on the counter. The next part of the process is for me to take the skins and the seeds out. Um, I have canned pasta sauce with the skins and the seeds in, um, and it's been fine. Um, if you don't want to go through all that trouble, you don't have to. This year I'm going to because I found that it was very hard for me personally to digest um, I have some uh, issues with uh, IBS and digestion, and so it was too hard on my system to keep the seeds and the skins in, so this year I'm going to be taking them out. And I want to tell you that I have tried several different ways of removing the skins and removing the seeds for pasta sauce and tomato sauce, and this is by far the best thing that I have found um, so far. We have one of the original squeezos, which is metal. Um, I have used one of those food mills that you turn and turn and turn, and then I've tried this. Um, this is called the uh, Cucina Pro Tomato Juicer. Uh, we actually got this at Goodwill, our very favorite place to shop. Uh, they don't have many of those here uh, where we're at right now. We'd have to travel at least an hour and a half to find a Goodwill. Uh, but prior to us moving to this homestead in the Missouri Ozarks, uh, we stacked up on things that we knew we were going to use in the homestead um, from Goodwill and other thrift stores to keep costs down, but to have us be prepared and to have several different sets of some things that were going to be critical components to our, um, our homestead. So I'm going to be using the Cucina Pro tomato juicer to make my tomato puree, um, and I'm going to show you how it works. Uh, basically, you ladle the tomato stuff into this hopper, and there is um, there's a, a handle back here that you turn. And as it, goes, as it goes through this process, the skins and the seeds will come out here into this bowl 
and then the puree and the rest of the juice will come out here into this bowl. And so I will, you know, once this is filled up, I'll dump that into my pot. And then once the seeds and, um, once the seeds and skins are filled up in this pot, I'm actually going to run them through one more time to make sure I have all of the goodness. And then once it's all done and dry and stuff, I'll just put it in my com compost and take it out. Uh, to uh, decompose naturally so we can use it in the garden. So uh, let me show you how that is going to work. Just going to take some of my my cooked tomato stuff and just kind of slop it in there. You can see some of the juice already coming out. I'm going to turn the handle. You can see the puree coming through. And on this side, you can see the skins and the seeds coming through. Okay, now that hopper is full. You can see that some of the seeds are coming through, but most of them are not. And that is nice, and there's a lot of uh, the puree in there. So, I'm actually I'm going to take those seeds and that skin off of there. I'm going to dump it back in there and give it one more go round. Because what is coming out the side over here to be thrown away is much more dry. And you can see that I'm still getting quite a bit of the puree to come out of the hopper. Okay, so all of that can go in to there by the compost and I'll just keep going until everything is uh, run through and I have a new pot with all of my tomato puree and tomato juice that I will make into uh, tomato sauce. So I'll come back when I'm done with all of that. So I'm done with all that and all of the, the pulp and the puree that came out of the little machine thing is back in my pot and you can see how much I have left. And um, especially in comparison to the juice that I pulled off. It's about, I would say I have about equal amounts of tomato juice and tomato sauce. And if you can look closely, it's still, it's still pretty thin. So I'm going to see what happens in an hour. I'm going to bring it to a boil and then simmer it without a cover for about an hour. And the most I really want to take off of here as far as um, more uh, water versus puree is probably another maybe 25%. Um, we always add a bunch of vegetables. Uh, we also, when we're making like spaghetti sauce, pasta sauce, we uh, oftentimes will add some kind of meat like a ground beef or uh, ground pork, ground venison um, to stretch that meal and to give us some protein. So aside from saving me time and saving money on the propane, um, I'm also going to keep it thinner because I'm going to add stuff in the end after I use it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, cook this down a little bit more so you can see the end product and then we're going to get canning. Okay, 47,000 hours later, just kidding, like an hour later I'm ready to can, but it seems like it's taken forever. I am set up, here's my uh, tomato sauce um, and uh, I guess it has thickened and uh, I'm tired of waiting for it so it's just going to have to do because I'm tired of waiting for it and I'm ready to can and I need to move on to other things. So I'm canning these in pint sized jars and then when I am done canning these I'm going to move on to the tomato juice and I'm going to can those in uh, quart jars. I already have pint jars of tomato juice so I'm going to move on to quart jars for them. So, um, in my jars here, I have some lemon juice. Now, in a previous video, I let you know that even though tomatoes and tomato sauce and tomato juice are acidic, which is what you need to water bath can, um, there's no guarantee the acidity level because different tomatoes have different acidity levels. You add lemon juice to all of your jars. 
you don't want to use lemons straight from the tree because their acidity level also varies. So use um, bottled lemon juice from the store, okay? So in a pint jar, you put one tablespoon of lemon juice in each jar. In a quart jar, you put two tablespoons of lemon juice in each jar. Um, salt is optional. I'm not putting salt in today because I'll just salt it when I uh, use it, depending on the recipe that I'm using. Uh, so I'm going to get started. Now when you're canning tomato products in a water bath canner, you fill up your jars until it's a half an inch from the rim. Um, and so we're, we're going to do that. This is the tomato sauce. Get this going. Now I already have my water in my uh, canner on the stove. I have two of them. The shorter one is going to be for the pint jars and the taller one will be for the quart jars. I already have that. I bring that to a boil ahead of time and then I just turn it off so it's really hot, ready to go so it doesn't take so much time to get back going. Okay. Check the level there, that's good. Wipe off the rim. Put a hot lid on top of there. Put a ring on. Put it in the canner. I put them in right away just so they start getting hot right away. And that canner holds 12 pints, or 10 pints, I'm sorry, 10 pints, uh, so that's what I'm hoping to be able to can, at least this go around. Um, I'm just going to keep going on this, on this process and fill up my canner and get that started. Now these pint jars, when you put them in the canner, when you have all of it filled up, then you put the, uh, the top back on, turn on the heat, once it starts boiling again, uh, then you set your timer to 35 minutes. Um, after 35 minutes, take off the uh, top of your canner, turn the heat off and wait five more minutes and then you can pull them out to your towel. It was a perfect 10. 10 pints of tomato sauce. Uh, the last one is going in the canner. Now when you're canning water bath canning, you need to make sure that you have at least one inch of water on top of your jars. I'm going to put those back in there and put the top back on, turn that on high. Like I said before, once that reaches a boil, then you'll set your timer for 35 minutes, process them for 35 minutes, turn off the heat, take off the cover for another 5 minutes, and then you can take them out of your canner. Now we are going to move on to canning tomato juice. I'm going to switch out these a little bit here. bring my tomato juice over and I'm going to uh, can these in quart jars. Mix that up. And I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I used to do this with citrus juice and it made the process go a lot faster. I just pour it in. Pour it in your quart jar up to a uh, half inch from the rim. I have uh, lemon juice in here already. Let's see how I did. I might have poured it over a little bit. Nope, it's just foam. Wipe off the rim. Put a hot lid on there. the band. Put that in your canning jar or canning canner. I have this tall canner that I like to use for quart jars, especially when I know I'm not going to have a whole lot of quarts to do. Take that off there. Until I'm ready, I'm going to turn off the heat. It is boiling in there. Put this baby in there and move on to the rest. of tomato juice in the canner. So I put that in my tall canner here, made sure that I have at least one inch of water on top of it. I'm going to turn the heat on that. Put 
Put the lid back on. And for quart jars, once that comes back to a boil, you will let that process for 40 minutes. Then turn off the heat, take off the uh, cover, let that uh, sit for five more minutes, and then pull it out of the canner, and we're done. So today's work results in 10 pints of tomato sauce and five quarts of tomato juice. Love it. The last one, whew, gosh, that was a long day, but I'm really proud of what I have here. And I can't wait to get back out in the garden and pick more tomatoes so we can do it all over again. So you guys, thanks for coming along while I can some uh, tomato sauce and uh, tomato juice. More to come. And if you like what you saw, please hit the thumbs up. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, uh, please do that in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do that and hit the notification bell so that you know when we have a new video. Uh, we're doing those five days a week these days. Uh, so until next time, you guys, take care and God bless. Hey, thank you guys so much for stopping by the homestead today. We do truly appreciate every one of you for wanting to be part of our lives. Uh, we're now going to be putting out five new videos every week, Monday through Friday. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. Also, don't forget to check out the videos over here on the side. Thank you so much, and we look forward to seeing you next time back on the homestead. God bless.